you can hear little baby noises in the background. <laughs> Esme's back with us again she's today. Right, she's very <laughs> fine. Yes, yes. Um, this is our second episode yeah. of Feels Their Mama Q&A. Yeah, yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you're really good at that. Um, okay. So, this is from, our first question is from Brianna. From we don't know where. Um, she's a first time mama to mm-hmm. a six month old boy called Jackson. Aww. We've been trying to work on self soothing in night time, but I cannot handle hearing him cry it out. He falls asleep nursing and usually sleeps about six hours, but lately he's been waking up an hour later and won't go back down to, unless I rock him. I've read or nurse him again. I've read that this is creating bad sleep habits. How do you, you two get your little ones to sleep on their own? Well, I don't really. Um, (laughs) I'm the one of us that's still nursing my two and a half year old. Um, I have, here's the thing. When my son, the first year and a half, maybe a year, I definitely nursed him to sleep. I didn't care about this idea of like the bad sleep patterns or the habits that we were um, creating. I was like, he has a need. I'm going to fulfill the need, whatever that is. And I didn't worry about it. In fact, Brody's a a really amazing sleeper. (laughs) Um, And now that he's older, we'll have some boobies and then read a book and then he'll go to sleep and he can fall asleep on his own. But he kind of, they just sort of learn. And I think it's about being patient with them and, and really meeting their needs and where they are at at the moment without trying to force them into... Um, a place where they might not be emotionally or physically ready to be in. So I guess that's kind of how I handled that. Oh, it's so missing. Oh, try this. Oh, missing. Vivian, I'm right now. There we go. Oh, you can hear us sucking. It's just okay. Like, hey. Um, yeah. So for Wyatt, actually, um, I feel like six months, seven months is about the time that he started rolling over. Um, And so I did a mommy and me class at the pump station and the mommy and me teacher was like, once they're rolling over back and forth, you know, they can start sleeping on their tummies. And so I tried it with him and I tried like, you know, rolling, like when he rolled over, I tried just like rubbing his back a little bit. And um, he was like kind of thrown off, like, you know, crying or whatever. I was rubbing his back and I was telling him it was okay and then until he got like more and more comfortable with it. And then um, he ended up really liking that and sleeping well on his tummy. So what I started doing at that point with him was the really gentle approach of like sort of being there with him and, and as he's falling asleep, like letting him fall asleep without, you know, you're sort of touching them until they get sleepy and then you kind of sneak out of the room. And he would like not cry but he would like call out or something and then I would like gently come back in and like sort of rub his back and as he would seem sleepy and drift off I only had to do that three times in a row like three days in a row of coming in and like rubbing his back a little and then walking out and he ended up soothing himself to sleep he would just know that once he rolled over it started happening where I would be like nursing him and I would go to put him down in the pack and play next to the bed and he would try to flip over in my arms. He was so ready to be on his tummy. And so, um, and they told me that that was going to happen. So I was like, oh, that's, that's kind of cool. Like he's, you know, he's got it. This is his system now. Um, I will tell you that with sleep, it was the biggest topic of conversation in our mommy and me class and sleep changes constantly mm-hmm. when they're teething, their sleep will change. It doesn't matter if you're co-sleeping with them. I mean, we, we had Wyatt in a bassinet next to the bed and then when he would wake up for his first, you know, eating of the night, it would be like somewhere around 12 or one in the morning. I just pull him into bed and he'd be in bed with me the rest of the night. And that was just easy for me to like pop him on and just sleep like that. So, but the sleep, changes all the time and so even though that worked for a while for us to like lay him down and walk out of the room Mm -hmm. when he was a little bit older like one and a half ish didn't work anymore like he was really upset about it and then um we tried new things and what ended up working later when he got a little bit bigger was singing him okay we're gonna do two songs 
and then mommy's going to leave the room. And so we'd do two songs and then he would have that plan. You know, I was going to leave the room and then I'd walk out and he'd be quiet and he'd put himself to sleep. And so really it's just like whatever starts, you like see what's working for them, then kind of go with that. But you can try a bunch of different things. I did. And you yeah. know, I was never a person who could do cry it out. Um, and I even like babysat twin twin babies when I was a little kid, and her, their mom was like, "Put them in their cribs and let them cry it out." And I ended up like pulling them both out and yeah, like, rocking them that. to sleep, I, I did that <laughs> and then I putting them back in asleep. And I was like, uh, "Sorry, I'm sorry." <laughs> yeah. Um, so really, you gotta just trust your instinct. But those are things that worked for me, and hopefully that helps you. Yeah, and it sounds like your mama voice is already there. Yeah, and instinctively, for sure. you know that that is not the method. But there are other really amazing ways. Like I know um, my uh, this woman that I work with a lot, Jennifer Wahlberger, she has the Sleep Easy Solution. So that's an mm. amazing book that you could check out too. Yeah. And it's all like gentle ways to get them to sleep longer periods. Dr. J. Gold, um, not J. Gold, <laughs> Sears. <laughs> no, Dr. Sears, not Dr. Sears, my pediatrician. Oh, Gordon. Gordon, Dr. J. Gordon, oh my God. Goldberg's Sears, on your Gordon. mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> no, no reason. Um, Just a gorgeous OBGYN. Who delivered Sean? My baby. <laughs> anyway, um, so <laughs> he's like going to get the biggest head if he ever sees this. Anyway, see um, so Dr. J. Gordon has an amazing mm. sleep. Um, just uh, uh, he wrote, I guess, a blog on it and then became so popular people were using it that he came up with this very gentle, easy solution. It's on. great. I tried it too. Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> I loved it too. I mean, I still uh, didn't really follow through with it 100%. But um, because I actually was in a place where I could breastfeed my son to sleep and I still can and it's never been an issue and I haven't needed him to sleep longer because he, mm -hmm. he has always been a really good sleeper. But who knows? Every baby's different. Every child is different. Um, I don't know if this baby is going to really need help in that area. So, yeah, just continue to listen to your mama instinct and, and maybe check out Dr. Jay Gordon's stuff and uh, Jennifer Wahlberger. And I think there's something called the five minute sleep solution, yeah, too, yeah, that which is cool also too. great, too. It's like these are all very gentle methods. And so, you know, try, try, try different things. Stick with something for a little bit just to see how it works. Like three times, they yeah. say. Like, you know, usually it's like you'll kind of get an idea after about a week and if something's not working for him then you know move on to change it up yeah um thank you for the question yeah uh okay isabel from chile my question is how should i keep my house and my baby's environment um i feel like my baby might be overstimulated i'm a new mom i have a three month old baby and lately i've been having the feeling that he is overstimulated because at the end of the day he cries so much and so hard mm -hmm. I thought that maybe I have too many things in my house that distract him. So at the end of the day, he's just exhausted from having too much stimulus. What are your thoughts? Yeah, hmm. yeah overstimulation can be a big problem yeah. with babies. I think now, back in the day, it was like you hardly had any stuff for your baby. It was just you, your boobs, a bottle. You would hang out with your child. There wasn't a lot of stuff going on. But now we live in a day and an age where... There's like special rockers and lights and things that vibrate and there's just so much stuff that we can bring into their environment which can actually end up having a detrimental effect. So I know Sarah is pretty similar to me. We don't have a ton of stuff for our kids. Um, you know, Esme right now is just literally lying oh. on a bed farting. <laughs> <laughs> that was a grunt. <laughs> But she's looking around, she's observing the room right now. We don't have any anything in front of her. She doesn't have a rattle. She's just like observing her natural environment. And I think we have to put trust in our babies that they have what they need um, without us having to come in and do things for them and giving them toys. Um, That's something that I was going to say too when I, when I read your email is that um, there someone gave me this thing called a kiwi sheepskin or something. It was like this like mat that was furry or whatever and um we put Wyatt on it when he was a baby and then some this time somebody gave us like some other like baby mat thing and so a lot of people take those and then they put like lots of toys and things over them 
But we never did that. It was like if I was cooking in the kitchen when it was just one baby and no dogs in the house, <laughs> then I would like lay that where I could see him and I would just lay him there and I'd let him sort of absorb what was around him. And Esme actually, you know, she's only seven weeks old, but I, um, I have a, a thing with her where it's like if she's crying, she's either tired, she's hungry. Um, transition. Yeah, transition. Um, or she needs her baby alone time. And so that's kind of what she's doing right now back here is that she needs that time to just not be on me and not need me to, like, do anything for her. She just wants to lay there and just be peaceful and still. And so Wyatt actually needed that a lot. Um, I had to give that to him as part of his routine during the day. When he established his own routine, he established – this baby alone time it was like three times a day where he just needed to like chill out for five ten minutes on a mm -hmm. blanket or whatever bed like wherever it was that was safe so that yeah. would be a big suggestion and also there's this swaddle that was designed specifically for babies who are overstimulated um, called the Ollie swaddle and um, this woman Hindi she uh, she designed it she was fostering um, this baby and he really had a hard time like getting you know sorted and just sort of was like upset and you know had a lot of the like arm movements and stuff that would wake him or mm -hmm. um the reflex. yeah and so she designed the swaddle and um and it totally worked for her baby so it would be something to try as well is um doing a swaddle in the evening yeah and making that Part of the evening routine and if you set up an evening routine of like bath baby massage mm -hmm. and swaddle and see how that comforts him or just bath and baby massage and some like airing out baby alone time yeah and see how that one of the feels. um philosophies that we use a lot uh and when you hear sarah and i joking about the <laughs> hey, 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 that comes from this philosophy called rye parenting but one of the like fundamental principles of right parenting is um, observe more, intervene less. So it's about observing your baby, creating a safe environment for them to just do their thing, roll around, look up at the ceiling, do whatever it is without you coming in and doing things for them. Um, and you know what's so beautiful about it? It's quite liberating as a parent because you don't have to do very much. You can sit there and you can really just observe your child and their own creativity and their imagination without um, handing them toys and, and setting up play for them. Like, you're really... You learn a lot about them yeah. during this time. Like, I learned a lot about her and the things that she needed just watching her. And then she also would make way more eye contact. Exactly. with me during that time and I was like wow like she holds great eye contact and she's only you know x amount of weeks old at this point so yeah I think she could <laughs> <laughs> I was like and I smell something yeah perfect timing yeah um we are at the end of our video um so we will be back again with some more questions and thanks to everyone who wrote in they're really thought-provoking and it's cool to go back and think about all this sort of stuff. Yeah. All right, guys. We will see you soon. Bye. Peace out.